I'm going to take a look at Rolls theorem first, um, but we're going to make a tab for two theorems actually. So I'm going to leave four lines just because uh, I need to write the whole title. It's mean value and Rolls theorem. So we're actually going to do two in one here because they're pretty much the same thing. All right, so taking a look at Rolls theorem first. Rolls theorem says, let F be continuous on the closed interval AB and differentiable on the open interval AB. This is a listening check, underline continuous and differentiable. Underline the words continuous and differentiable. And also, so the third thing is if F of A is equal to F of B, then there's a, at least one number C in that open interval such that the derivative is equal to zero. Okay, this is going to sound like a whole bunch of words for right now, but I'm going to show it to you what it means graphically, geometrically. We're actually going to do it a few times just so I can make sure you really understand it. It's a very important theorem in calculus or um, the applications of why we use calculus. So let me show it to you graphically, okay, just because it was all that word and sounds confusing. So let's say you had a curve, all right, so with a beginning and an end. So let the beginning be the point A and the end be point B. It's continuous because it doesn't have any breaks. It's differentiable because it's smooth. It has no kinks, right? And no um, undefined places. So it's continuous and differentiable. So it says if A is equal to, if F of A is equal to F of B, right? So you can see that those exact, the Y coordinates are exactly the same. Then there's one number C where at least one number, so there could be more than one. So there's one number C where the slope is zero. What does that mean? The derivative is equal to zero, which means the tangent line is equal to zero, which means the slope is equal to zero, which means there's a horizontal line at some point, which makes sense. Because if you start at one point and you have to end up at that exact point, then either you're going in a straight line, which means the slope is zero, or it's a curve, which is going to end up where there's a peak or um, a value or whatever. So there's at least one point basically where it's going to be um, zero. The slope is going to be zero. But those three things have to happen. It has to be continuous, differentiable, and um, the two y values must be equal. The two endpoints of the y value must be equal. All right, so that's what Rolle's theorem says. Those three things must happen. You have to memorize them. So you're going to hear me saying it over and over and over and over again. All right, so here's a question that they might ask you. Determine whether Rolle's theorem can be applied to F on the closed interval a, B, this is a listening check, color in Rolle's theorem, color in Rolle's theorem, right after determine whether. And it, if it can be applied, okay, so if it can be applied on that closed interval, find all values of C in the open interval A, B, such that the derivative is equal to zero. The derivative at that point c sorry is equal to zero all right so we start off with a function so number one the function is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x plus 2 and the closed interval is going to be negative 1 3 now, really, really important so that you don't get confused. Note, this is an interval, not x and y coordinates, okay? So this is an interval, not x and y coordinates. These are both x values. It's telling you x is between negative 1 and 3. All right, so first thing, is it continuous? Um, well, the only place that it's not continuous is when x is equal to negative 2 because that's going to make the denominator 0. And remember, we can't divide it by 0. So that's the only place where it's not continuous, all right? So not continuous at x equals negative two, but that doesn't matter because it's not in our interval, because our interval goes from negative one. So negative two isn't even in our interval, so that's okay. So is it continuous, is it differentiable, and is f of a equal to f of b? All right, so is it differentiable? Yeah, because it's basically saying once you take the derivative and you look at the domain again, is there any place where it's undefined? So I'm actually going to assume it is for right now until I take the derivative and then just double check. Either way, even if you answer the question, if you don't check for those things and answer it all the way, you'll find that it has no solution because those um, three things has to happen in order for it to work out. All right, so... Again, it's not continuous. Is it differentiable? It is differentiable. Just take my word for it right now because there are no kinks. 
um, is f of a equal to f of b. Well, what's f of a? So f of negative 1. So you're going to plug in negative 1 where you see x. So negative 1 squared is 1 minus 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And that's going to be minus 3 over negative 1 plus 2, which is positive 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, minus 3 is 0 over 1, which is going to give you 0. Alright, and then f of b, so now we're putting b, which is 3. Okay, so again, the first one is a, the second one is b. So f of 3 where you see x, so that's going to be 3 squared, which is 9, minus 2 times 3, which is negative 6, minus 3 all over 5, and that's going to give you 0 over 5, which is also equal to 0. So in this case, f of a is also equal to f of b, so it meets all the three requirements for Rolle's theorem to work. So we can apply Rolle's theorem. So Rolle's theorem says, after you've met the three requirements, is it continuous differentiable and is f of a equal to equal to b? Um, then you can go ahead and just say the derivative is equal to zero. So again, I'm just showing you that it's differentiable because it doesn't have one of these conditions. You learn to recognize which ones are differentiable and which ones aren't. Alright, so now we take the derivative. And if you can't tell, by the way, if you can't tell right off the bat that it's differentiable, don't worry about it. Just actually take the derivative. And if the derivative um, has no places where it doesn't exist, then you know it's differentiable. All right, so Rolle's theorem says that once those three things have happened, that the derivative, there's at least one place, at least one place, could be more than one, there's at least one place where the slope is equal to zero or the derivative is equal to zero. All right, so all you have to do is find the derivative and set it equal to zero. So this is, again, low d high minus high d low over low square. So low d high. So low is x plus 2 times the derivative of high, which is 2x minus 2, minus high, which is x squared minus 2x minus 3, times the derivative of low, which is just 1, all over low squared, which is x plus 2 squared. All right, go ahead and simplify this by just getting into the house. So I'm going to get um, x times 2x is 2x squared. This is a listening check. Color in 2x squared, what I just wrote down, 2x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x, that's going to be positive 4x, that's going to be negative 4, minus, and I keep this in parentheses so I don't confuse it, and that's just the same thing, so actually I don't even need the parentheses, so just writing out the same thing, changing all the signs inside. All over x plus 2 squared. Alright, so simplifying that, that's going to give me 2 minus 1 is 1, so that's 1x squared, negative 2 x plus 4 is positive 2x plus another 2 is 4x and then negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 over x plus 2 squared. Alright, so again when you have a fraction and that fraction has to equal to 0, what you're really saying is the numerator has to equal 0 because um, 0 divided by anything is going to be 0. So really I can really just ignore the denominator and worry about the numerator. Alright, so placing the numerator equal into 0, so that's x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals 0, and then solve it. So this is just a factoring problem. I'm going to use the um, formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And a is 1, b is 4, c is negative 1. If you don't remember, again, go back to the old preparation for calculus quadratic formula and then figure out how to do that. So plugging it in, I'm going to get negative 4 plus or minus b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times 1, which is 4, times negative 1, which is negative 4, all over 2. And then negative 4 plus or minus, that's going to give me the square root of 20 over 2. And we can simplify the square root of 20 um, to negative 4 plus or minus, and 20 is what? 5 times 4, right? So I can take the square root of 4 out, so that's going to give me 2, so I'm going to get plus or minus 2 radical 5, which is what's left inside, over 2, and that's going to simplify because I divide everything by 2 to negative 2 plus or minus radical 5. So if you don't, if you're not sure how to simplify that, just ask me in class and I'll go over it again. Alright, so remember the interval is between negative 1 and 3, so think about this number that we have right here. If I take negative 2 and I subtract anything, I'm going to get more of a negative number, which is going to be outside my interval. So that's not going to be a solution. So the only solution is going to be um, the one where I'm adding something to it. Because if I'm subtracting, it's going to be more negative. So again, you start off with negative 2, if you're subtracting, you're going more negative. So the only solution that it could be is negative 2 plus radical 5, because that's going to put me into the interval. Because radical 5 is bigger than 1. 
because negative 2 plus 1 is going to be negative 1. But radical 5 is bigger than that. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to Rolle's theorem. I'm going to continue um, mean value theorem right there. So watch the next video.